Welcome to Appalachian Bonsai. Today we're going to be working on this hornbeam. It's uh, late spring, early summer. I'm going to go ahead and take off majority of this brand new growth. I'm going to probably cut the leaves in half uh, and reduce the amount of leaves on there. And what that's going to do is cause this tree to put out a new flush of growth and bud back some in preparation for a little branch ramification, a little branch structure. Uh, I don't want these branches to get long and wild like this. I want them to be a little bit closer to the trunk. I also don't want them straight uh, as an arrow. I want them to be bent a little bit here and there, and um, it just adds extra character to your trees. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already shortened two branches on this. Um, you can see some here on this left-hand side. Um, you can also see them over here on this right-hand side. I did a little shortening of this earlier as well. Uh, you didn't get a chance to see that because I wasn't recording. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of that now. But since we're here, let me show you what we've done. We have pruned these branches on this side. We have a little nice fork that's happening here. There's a curve that takes an abrupt turn this way. That is in your direction. And then we have a fork. Um, this forking is, is really nice because that's what branches do. They grow and they fork and they fork and they fork. And as... Uh, we have all heard Dan Robinson say it makes it forking beautiful. So uh, that's what we're hoping to continue doing by pruning this back. I do have, um, we have three main leaf sections here. This is all new growth from this spring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the, the tip, just the tip, and reduce these down. And what I'm doing is I am going to cause new buds to come back into this area and those are going to fork out. Um, I've already pruned this down to about two leaves here. I'm just going to reduce that. I could probably take off the entire leaf. Uh, I'm going to leave them. Um, that's up to you. Uh, a benefit of taking off the entire leaf is one, you don't have to worry about cut leaves, uh, which can be an unsightly thing. This is not uh, a finished tree, so it's not going to be a problem this year. But you can take these completely off if you're trying to um, to really put off a nice new flush of fine small leaves, especially if you're going to put this into a show. All the new leaves that will be coming out should come out at approximately the same time. They should be approximately the same size. And that's something that you do in the, during the summertime. Okay, so you do this with maples. You can do it like we're doing with this American hornbeam here. Um, it's definitely going to uh, refine the branch structures. Now you say, why are you doing this now if you're not going to show this off? Well, I want this tree to, to have the beginnings of some refined work. And that's just going to make my job easier in the future. You're having to think many steps ahead. I have a branch here that's sticking straight out uh, and upward. I would prefer that it not be that way. I'm going to cut that off. It's got a broken section here. A nice broken section right there. I'm just going to take that off. Come in here right where that break is going to be. I'm just going to cut it right off. There we go. Now these two branches right here and here are going to grow outward. And that'll be the nice forking part of it. Now it's going to be hard for you to see some of this action, I realize, because I have this other foliage. So let me prune that back very quickly. All I'm going to do is reduce these long... Uh, these long parts of this year's growth back to about three or four buds and then we come back and shorten them in a little bit more. I don't mind taking them down all the way to two uh, leaf sections. I said buds, but leaf sections because uh, it's going to be really long coarse growth otherwise. You don't need it to be straight for a whole bunch of branches. And that whole long leaf section is gone. This has got one, two, three, four. I'm just putting it back to the four here for now. I can come back and refine that later. Sharp scissors help. There we go. That's nice and easy. We've just reduced down a lot of this early spring foliage, and that's good. Um, there's still plenty left on here, and I'm about to reduce some of that. What we're also doing and what we're looking for whenever we're doing this type of reduction here in the summertime is to go ahead and get rid of errant branches. What I mean by that is the ones that are going this way and that way, and um, if you can head them off at the pass, or if you can nip them in the bud, or if you can grab them early, then it'll save you time in the training process. Uh, so for instance, I have 
a, a nice kind of refined branch coming this direction, a little bit away towards me. I have another one just above it that's brand new and it's also coming this way. It's much thicker in diameter than this one is. Is it going to be uh, a better branch than the one below it? I don't think so because this kind of comes up and then over and then over and backwards to me. It's something that we can do away with. And I'm going to cut this top section off. We have this long branch here, the smaller branch here. Which one's the better branch? There. Now I have these two branches here to look at. If I'm being honest with myself, this thing coming up doesn't need to be there because often the if you're looking at traditional Japanese, they're all kind of just going out. They're not going out and then up. But I don't have any issues with it. I kind of like it. If I want to remove it, I can remove it. I've got a branch just below it uh, here that could suffice for coming out this direction instead of going up. But I'm going to leave it for now. I don't think it looks ugly. I think it looks like uh, even the trees above me have branches that come out and then up. You may say that that's ugly, but you don't have to make your tree like this. Now I have this piece of wire, which you, I can unwind it because it's not growing into the trunk. If this were growing into the trunk, what you would do is probably use some wire cutters, uh, which I do have down here. And you would use these to cut little sections out of that wire and then take the sections off one at a time. That way you avoid um, tearing bark. But since it wasn't bitten into the, the tree bark, you can unwire that right off. So we have this branch coming out this way. Um, where I had done this from last year, this is a little bit more from this year, as well as this guy here. I don't want this coming back into the tree and up. Could I wire it out? I could. And I kind of like doing that because there's nothing on this side. So I could wire this out in this direction. Or I could cut that off because it has got uh, a tendency to grow upward and wire this one out, which I might also do. Alright, so this one's growing straight up at an angle that I'm not appreciating. I'm going to cut that off. Right there. Okay. Um, it's growing straight. Straight, straight, straight from, from this vantage. Now if you're looking at it from here, it's got a little bit of an undulation, but it's not as strong as say this going up here and then going straight down. Um, I kind of like that. Uh, the diameter of this is also relatively the same all the way across, and then it gets a little bit smaller, which is good, but there's not any forking going on on either side. It's directly above this branch. I can probably wire this one a little bit forward or backward, uh, whereas I cannot with this top one, which is still too heavy. It doesn't look bad, this branch right here. It's got a little more refinement, but I'm going to go ahead and cut that off like that. There we go. Cut these in half here. See if I can get a little more back button. Okay. Some smaller leaves in there. I'm just going to leave them. They don't need to be cut in half. You can pull them off if you want to. What I'd like to do is actually remove this completely. And the reason being is that it's relatively straight as it, in relation to the branch. And um, it doesn't need to be. It's also about the same thickness as the rest of the branch. I have kind of a fork here. I'm going this way and this one still continues straight from the trunk. I'm going to get rid of it. So I can just get rid of this growth here and hopefully encourage these guys to continue growing. Um, I'm going to peel that one off there. And this might dry out. It might produce new buds. I'll just remove them as soon as this branch is set, which it should hopefully within another season. This is still in training. You don't have to be super delicate with it. There's not much growth happening in this area. I could maybe have wound it around, but then I'd have a pair of twin branches. I don't want that. Maybe I can encourage this to grow a little bit more. That's the tough thing with this hornbeam. It's uh, not 100% the best material. I wish I had more butts popping out, but I don't. Um, but cutting the leaves in half reduces the amount of sunlight that the tree is getting, and it forces the tree to put out new buds and new leaves. If you have an area that's really, really weak, you can, like where I just cut this off, you can leave the leaf whole. You don't have to cut them in half. 
Uh, leave it whole, that means that more sun is going to be uh, gathered by that, more energy, more sugars, the carbon in the air, it's, it's all going to be um, extracted and used by that leaf, which just makes the rest of that branch stronger behind it. Um, whenever you're doing anything like pruning or uh, needle reduction, leaf reduction, what you're doing is you're stressing this tree out. And require, you're forcing it to grow in a way that it's capable of doing. It's, it's able to tolerate it as long as it's healthy. This is a healthy tree. Uh, that's the only reason I'm able to do the type of work that I'm doing with this. Uh, it's because it's healthy. A good reason for doing this, as I've mentioned before, is just to make sure that your growth doesn't get too wild on you. Um, whenever you're fertilizing, whenever you're this the spring just has this madcap growth rate that it's really hard to control. Don't worry about controlling it. Let it grow. I mean, you can pinch and you can prune a little bit here and there. But by the time that these leaves start to harden off in the late spring, early summer, is really a great time to, to catch those potential mistakes for future growth, for future training, for future branch structures. Um, you know, I'm catching all sorts of things going up, down, left, right, that I don't particularly want or that I particularly do, and so I get rid of the other ones around it. You're like, man, you're taking off a lot. Well, it's a healthy tree. I can do this. Oh, it's gone. Now, if, you may notice on this tree that not all the branches are laying down flat. If you look at a lot of older deciduous trees, they have branches that are going out, and then they fan upward. They don't all lay down. Um, much like a spruce. These all raise up and then down. They're all trying to seek the light in their own which way. So these ones are laying down a little bit more, but if you look at the ones coming up towards the top of the tree, they're lifting up a little bit, uh, which is okay because that's what they naturally do. Um, I'm going to leave that for now, although I am going to shorten it down some. Um, I don't want it to going as far up as it has, and that's just a, a balance not balanced for the tree's health. It's, it's more of my own aesthetic balance. Just gonna finish shortening these up here at the top. Shouldn't take but just a second. And then we'll be done with that. I have two competing tops, okay? I've got a nice big fat fork right here and there, but uh, I wanna choose a direction. Right now this thing's kinda of going up toward me and then it kinda of goes back and around. It's almost doing like a little bit of a spiral. And that next spiral has it coming this way, which is good, which is a little bit more over the um, base of the tree, which you often hear that you should have the top of the tree over the base. That's, that's a guideline. It's not necessarily a rule. Uh, in this particular instance, I do want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the other side. All right. go. Now there are these other leaf buds right here that are uh, going to be able to grow off and make another branch. Again, we have this one below. You know what? It's really not going to hurt anything. Okay, let's get to wiring. I am going to add just a little bit of wire right here to bring this down. I don't want it going down much, but I also don't want it going too far before I wire it down because it's it's stiff here at this backside from last year. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect the branches. I'm going to put a piece of rubber. This is a rubber inner tube from an old tire. Uh, I'm going to put a piece of wire on the backside here and a piece of wire on top there to hopefully protect this from wire bite which happens very quickly during a fast grow. This is aluminum wire. I'm not going to be wrapping it around the tree. I'm just going to use it as a guy. I'm going to start by adding this down around the base. I'm just going to twist this up. Okay, not too tight. Doesn't need to be. Now, I could wire this all the way around and then bend it, but I'm doing it really loose. It's ugly, but you know what? This is not a problem for me. You know, in all things, you should practice your absolute best. But in some cases, 
mediocre is all right. There. That's better. Yes, yeah, so we just wrapped a little bit of rubber around here with some wire. We wrapped some rubber and some wire up here. And then all I did was just twist it here in the middle a little bit to bring it back down. It worked out okay. So there you have it, just a basic prune on this horn beam. Um, I hope you like it. I hope it gives you some inspiration and some understanding of when to do this type of work. Uh, and what are the reasons why you do this type of work. Some of you have uh, asked that I show a little bit more of the development process and not just the collection process. So here's a tree that's been out of the ground for about three years. And this is what uh, this stage has been though, so far. So anyway, that's pretty simple. I hope you like that. I hope it gives you some inspiration to do this type of work on your own trees, especially if they're healthy. They should be healthy before you do this type of work. Um, follow me on Instagram at Appalachian Bonsai. I take a lot of photos. I take a lot of videos. You even get to see more Rocky, more trees, and more Appalachian Bonsai. So follow me there. Like and subscribe because there's always more to come. Thanks for watching.